Is it live? Yeah. Oh. Cool. It's exciting. Who knows how to start these things better than us? I don't know. We're getting to be pros. This is episode 15 of The Drop Live. I'm Thomas. And I'm Jared. From Believe in the Run. And today, we got some exciting stuff to talk about. We do. Especially, I mean, some shoes. There's a lot. A lot of shoes. Things. So, what we're going to get into first, though, is my boy Jared here just finished up running the Morgantown Marathon in West Virginia. West Virginia. Um, that, that was a race. <laughs> a race or it a run? A run. It was a long run. Uh, it wasn't the race that, well, first off, I'll say that I had a great time. It was a small race, um, but there was a lot of water, which was very much needed. Um, it was about 1,500 feet of elevation. 1,500 feet. And this isn't a trail, it's just roads, right? This is a road race of yeah. 1,500 feet. Why would you pick, how did you pick this race? It just happened. But I, we lost track. We were trying to count all the hills, and we lost track after like 17, I think. Mm. Um, I mean, it really looked like one of the cruddiest courses that I would, like, this isn't one that you go for time. This is just, I want to do a grueling marathon. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, what the hell? This was my worst marathon time, I guess, in the three that I've done. Like, by far my worst. Um, but I didn't feel awful at the end in that, like, I didn't feel dead to the world. But you didn't, but you're not racing it. Like, you didn't go out there. Like, yeah. I, I've run with you, and I know that if you wanted to, you could run a lot faster. Yeah, this is where you are taking your time. This isn't, this wasn't like a PR course at all. I mean, Mile 25 was just the entire mile 25 was a hill. What was your favorite part of the race? Like, what, um, was it the swag? Was it the just like, hey, we conquered something hard? Like, what did what, you like about it? It was pretty cool. The course for there wasn't much crowd support, but I feel like I saw a lot. Like, a, a lot of was, what? Of West Virginia? A lot of West Virginia. There was like a lot of. Oh, don't geez. worry about that. There was a lot of <laughs> terrain change. I mean, um, you know, I guess we saw, we ran along the river, we ran on a bunch of roads, we ran through parks, we ran through, I mean, the campus. So if you wanted to see West Virginia. Run through it. That's, I guess, the, be the way to do it. Or mm -hmm. drive it, I guess. Yeah, I don't think I'll ever do that marathon. Uh, like, like, if I'm going to do a hilly one, I think I would do, uh, like... Big Sur. A trail race? <laughs> yeah, a trail race. Big Sur. I mean, those. if we're going on the road, though, I would do, do like, definitely Big Sur, because, I mean, that's supposed to be the most gorgeous views there are. I mean, if you know, it just goes, I think it's, is it I-5? I don't know what you call that. But it just, the, yeah. the like, Monterey and all that stuff. This isn't the California coast. This is no, West, West Virginia. Virginia. Do you see a lot of squirrels and stuff? I saw some squirrels. Yeah. Um, what was your post-run reward? Well, we had to drive three hours home after. So no uh, drinking. So no, I couldn't even drink. That I felt like the worst. I felt sick ever. because <laughs> I mean, literally the worst. Marathon. It got so hot, and I bet you guys smell great in the car. Actually, Marriott they let us use the um, outdoor showers. No, we yeah. used the locker room. We went into the hot tub ah. and then showered, and it was phenomenal. That's pretty choice. Now, that um, sounds like the best part of the marathon. That was the best part of the marathon. Mm. That, and then, I guess they had CeCe's Pizza at the end, in case you have forever wanted CeCe's Pizza. I've never, I've never tried CeCe's Pizza. <laughs> Any good? It's like six bucks for all you can eat. Uh, oh, I think I've seen ads for this. That's just, that's just great. I was going to say disgusting, but if you're ever going to be a sponsor, CC, we love your pizza. Um, what do you guys think about hydration vests for the marathon? Yes, no? Depends, on, I think. It depends on... For hydration vests for a marathon, I would say it depends on your pace. Like, yeah. if, you're, if you are going to be nine minutes and above, that's fine. You want to keep moving and just... Uh, have your water with you but if you're trying to go for speed um, you know carry as little as you can be as light and fast as you can and you know use the water stops practice the hydration on your training runs but um, you know I run for with a pack obviously for some of my trail runs and and longer runs that way but you know I'm not going for maximum pace yeah. so I, I would say if you're gonna race leave the pack at home if you're trying to BQ, don't use a vest. Yeah, you but don't see too many people BQing with 
uh, this, hydration vest on, except this, for yeah. Megan, maybe. It's not really. <laughs> it's a not vest. a hydration vest. You, a yeah, vest. Like, yeah. you carried a vest that had your gels in it and stuff. I think this could have. I mean, I had a handheld the entire time, and I filled it up a few times. Um, this was a race I could have run in, in a vest. But example, your pace was not like a fast pace. Yeah, it wasn't peak. Not not a, when I say fast, you know, it's all relative. But for this gentleman, what he would normally be running for a marathon, this was a slower pace for him. Yeah. If, yeah. Ryan says we're here for the custom Aussies that broke the internet. All right, let's pull them up. You want to grab? You're you're just doing this right away. I'm making I'm making. What do we Jared. start with this? Yeah, let's start with that. All right. So, if you know, this is the original Vazi Pace. And it was one of my favorite running shoes. I just love the way it looked, toe down. Like, it has that running shoe shape, like that teardrop shape. Some people will say Altra is foot shape. It, Altra is not foot shape for me. That's flipper shaped. I think it works for you. But for me, I like this cut in. I like just the, this shoe just looks fast. And I hate to say it, but I'm gonna use the word sexy. This is a sexy running shoe. Like it just is slim, light, fast, curves in the right spots. It's just a beautiful shoe. I was in love with it. Um, you know, the outsole on it, I was a little iffy on it. I, I think that it could have been smoother with a different outsole. And so, you know, we were talking and I think, I think it was right around the time where we had just gotten the Rebel and somebody had asked, you know, if you could pair any upper with a, a different midsole, what would it be? And, and I had said on, on the drop live um, that I would take this shoe's midsole outsole and put it on the Vazi. And at first I got a message in my Instagram feed and I thought this person, he, he, uh, he's just playing with me. This is never gonna happen. It's like, hey, would you like to see that shoe? And I'm like, yeah, I'd love to see that shoe. Um, but didn't expect to see anything about it. So here, hop in, hop in and show, show that. So this is what happens when the birds and the bees, when, when two shoes have a baby. <laughs> you can do that, this is all you. Yeah, I mean, here she is. I mean, she's just gorgeous. And I, I obviously tried her on, tried her on and worn her, and you know, seeing it maybe, because at first I was like, well, they must have figured out something with that upper that works better with this midsole outsole combo and that the old shoe upper won't work. It'll be cool to have, it'll be nice, but I didn't think I'd want to run in it. So I've tried it on and I'm gonna tell you another secret. This is the pair that I won't wear. This is the pair. I'm gonna have to hold that, you. That that I, <laughs> hold me, I'm not that flexible. I'm in middle of training. Um, but this is the pair that I've worn and I'm definitely gonna run in them. These are going to go on a shelf and never be touched because I have to tell you, this is like the coolest thing I've ever gotten as a shoe reviewer is, is someone taking two things that I talked about and putting them together and it's an actual shoe. And I have to say it works. Like I'll be doing a shoe review for it probably Tuesday of next week when Robbie's back and uh, I'll get in a run before then just to see how they feel. But, um, these, these are pretty amazing. What do you think? I mean, my favorite shoe ever is the Vazy Prism, the V2. And I want that with the rubbery eye sides. Uh, it had uh, that really... It's very similar to this. Okay. But, um, I mean, this is a beautiful combination. This is just like, I just want to... I mean, even if the outsole uh, is blue to match. Everything about the shoe works. So, uh, I mean... Like, I, I don't even know if it had a blue bottom one. Like, did, is that custom too? Mine, I think, is red. Yours is red, mine is red. I, I don't know, but I'm just gonna, like, I guess this has become a request hotline. Yeah, kind of <laughs> we're thing. gonna put out there what we want. We should do it with every shoe company, be like, this is the shoe. Dude, Ooh, if anyone's one. listening, a wide carbon plate shoe, I'll wear it because there's none out there. It's, you know? I'm surprised Altra hasn't come out with a carbon yeah. plate. We need, we need more carbon plates. For us. You know what's kind of crazy is this shoe is probably, I want to say, four years old, the Vazi Pace, maybe five years old. Um, and then pull up the Reebok that we just got. Thomas, does the little flipper on the side bother you? 
you know, it does kind of push the foot inwards when you're just kind of like going at slower paces and walking, but when you pick up the pace, I think it works well. Um, they're talking about this side flare Cody. up. Cody, you asked. Cody, hey Cody. It's got, how are you enjoying the chili pad, Cody? Um, the side that flares out when you're going a little bit faster, I don't even notice it. I think it's great for, uh, you know, my, my foot strike. I tend to be totally neutral, but if I was anything, I am a supinator, so I'm gonna land on that outer edge. So I can feel it on this a little bit, but um, I mean, this yeah. is a shoe where I'm a heel striker. I try not to in this shoe because this is made for yeah. essentially. I mean, you don't have a ton there. No, landing pretty much on the midfoot and mm -hmm. pulling off. So, what's the uh, weight on that shoe compared to the original Rebel? Ah, uh, you know I would do that. It's it's a little bit heavier, but we're talking like a fraction. I think. The, the other one was 7.8 something, and this was 8.1 something like that. So it picks up a little weight. Um, I tell you though, the fit of the upper, I just, I just love it. I think it's if it, it might be worth the extra point, you know, three ounces or something. But it's freaking phenomenal. <laughs> yeah, but look at this. So this five years, this colorway was five years with the dark in the back, and then this is brand new from Reebok and you may have watched we did a live review of this uh, shoe already and I've had another run in it since then and I, I just really like it it's a really nice daily trainer I compare it to like a Pegasus or a um, you know a Brooks Ghost any of those daily trainers that just kind of fit the bill it reminds me the feel of it reminds me a lot of like the Ultra Boost shoes but it's so much lighter with this float ride material than an Ultra Boost it's, it's a phenomenal shoe a lot of people don't like the cage on the shoe. I haven't had any issues with it. I like it. I think the way that it's pretty smart, how they have the cage go underneath the toe so that you're getting kind of that toe spring off the shoe. I think it's a really nice shoe. And I think, you know, with all that rubber, daily miles, this is a good shoe. And I think we're going to be seeing, what I'm noticing is in a trend in the running shoes right now, is you're going to be seeing stuff like the Asics shoe that we reviewed. Um, what was the name of that one now? Meta Ride. Glide Ride? Or? Yeah, Glide Ride. Yeah, it's a Glide Ride. The um, Glide Ride, you're going to get these heavier shoes from companies that are meant for longer distances and comfort, and then they're going to sell you a speed trainer. So it's actually a smart move by these companies. You're going to, instead of buying one shoe to do all your distances, you're going to start looking at shoes. Uh, if you're really into running, you're going to be looking at shoes as I need a shoe for my long runs and slow, easy runs, and I need a shoe for fast days, fast workouts, and racing. And I think we're going to start seeing a lot of companies pairing shoes. And I think that this one, this Float Ride Run 2.0, will be great shoe paired with the Run Fast. And I'm excited to see what they're going to do with the Run Fast this year. But um, the updates, hopefully they don't update too much because that was a pretty killer shoe. Lightweight stuff. But Jared, you tried this on just to see how it felt on a wide foot. And you didn't seem to think there was uh, any issues to worry about. Yeah. I mean, I... Times when I had the right shoe, I would have liked to also try the left one. But with this, I didn't. I mean, I think you know, people were complaining about the the cage. I didn't even notice it. People hate cages. I don't understand. Like, I don't even feel them on the shoes most of the time. Like the Adidas Ultra Boost and the Boost. I don't notice the cage. Yeah. Much. And then I mean, this almost. I guess the wrap around is just one giant cup keeping your foot in. So, yeah. I mean, I it definitely felt stable. Yep. And with your right foot, you weren't feeling the cage? No. I mean, obviously, I don't know after 15 miles. Like, yeah, it is. Feel. This is a knit, I mean, and pretty stretchy. It's stretchy. But, I mean, it wasn't like I put it on and was like, no, 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 get this off of my foot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. So, why don't we grab the Skechers Go Run Ride 8 Hyper? So someone asked, Run 2.0 versus Go Run Ride 8 Hyper Boost versus Forever Energy, which one is the best trainer? Well, I'm going to say the Energy is nice, but that's a TPU base versus a PVAX base midsole, and the PVAX actually has a better feel to it, a little more rebound. The Energy is nice for cushioning. Megan, her beacons got eaten by a dog and she went back to the energies and was really happy with it. I think for the price point, it's a stellar shoe for the price point. I think if you want to upgrade, 
spend 20 bucks more, get the go float ride and run 2.0, you would probably be doing yourself a nice service. I think it's gonna just have a hold up a little bit better and just you're gonna feel that that bounce of the P-backs and it's got tons of rubber on the bottom. It's gonna be a, a good shoe. Um, and you're asking about the Ride Hyper. Haven't run it yet, you can see. Tag's still on it, just came in the mail today. Um, and they don't even ship, send these in a box. It just came in like a plastic bag. <laughs> um, so, you know, which I don't mind. I don't need another shoe box. But the, um, it looks really nice. It looks like they really cleaned up the uh, outside. The or, original Go Run Ride had kind of like a rough feeling um, almost like a jacquard uh, upper and this one cleans all that up where this looked real cheap on the last one it looked like a cut out piece of vinyl it's uh, a, just a smooth welded piece coming over here um, and then of course the Hyper and I love the Hyper in the Razor 3 I just think it's phenomenal and the Ultra or the Max Road I, I don't know I'm excited to see this because I think this will cover what I need from that in the Max Road. I plan on doing my Saturday run in these shoes and turning around this review pretty quickly for you. We also have Dave Ames wearing it. Another nice feature they did is they added the Goodyear rubber on the bottom. So you're going to get a stickier, grippier rubber that um, I think will, will help just the quality of the shoe. You got really nice, one of the best midsoles out there right now in the Hyperburst and then throwing on Goodyear rubber, a cleaner looking upper. I think they're gonna have a winner here. I'm not too worried about like saying even before I run that this is a winner. It's pretty much the same shoe just like as the, the Ride 7, which I love, just with finer, better materials. So yeah. it should be good. What do you think of it? I mean, it's a safe looking shoe. I don't think that there's like anything really to complain about. Uh, little hints of color, you know, yeah, little, 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 little dash. Um, it's got a pull tab. Yeah, he so, loves a pull tab. But other than that, I don't have anything to complain about. You just want a wide. I just want a wide <laughs> Skechers performance shoe. You guys advertise on TV all the time because I always see those ads. I don't know if they're targeted to my TV, but no performance. Uh, Do you know what's weird? We were talking about this the other day, and it, it also happened with somebody else we were talking about. Uh, Robbie lost his wedding band, or thought he lost it. It was in a jean pocket or something like that. And he was just talking about it in the office. And the next thing, he went on line, and there was an ad yeah. for wedding bands <laughs> in his feed. And then, I don't know what he was talking about with someone else. He was talking with one of the people that uh, we're, we are doing a review for. And the... The guy got off the phone and they must have been tied by the rings but the uh, he got an ad for rings in his feed right after so I don't know they're how listening. they're listening but they are listening it's because you accept everything on your phone ah you just click listening. accept and they're listening yeah and yeah so maybe there you are sketches is listening and you'll get a wide shoe <laughs> yeah it'll ha eh, it could you know hey you know what could you, you give me that hookah box So this was exciting. Any questions maybe before we go on? About the ride? Uh, there's a random question. Okay. Epic React 2 or Beacon 2? I mean, for me, I would go Epic React, but I just ran that marathon in the Beacon 2. What do you think? Have you run the in the uh, React, Epic React? No, I tried them on there. They don't work. Megan's worn both. What do you think, Megan? Epic React or Beacon 2? I think I go Beacon 2. Megan would go Beacon 2, so it's split down the middle, so can't help you there. <laughs> we got them all. I like, I like the Epic React for style, for the way it feels. It's light. It feels uh, soft and cushioned. I feel like the Beacon kind of floats between soft and cushioned and firm, and so like I kind of find, for me, the Beacon was kind of like in a weird no-man's land where I liked, ended up liking the shoe that I thought was most similar to the Beacon 2, was the Ride 7, but now the Ride 7 has got the Hyperburst, so I think the Ride is going to feel totally different. But, I don't know. But this was a surprise today. We got this box. Is this a main box? One? One. 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 One
He's just trying to be ignorant. Um, <laughs> anyway, box arrived. I'm like, what could it be? And popped it open. You want to grab Megan's version so you can show the female? This spring, you're going to see the Hoka Elevon. Is that how you pronounce it, you think? Elevon? You know what? It's Don't ask me because I. E L E V O N. I don't think that's Elevon. Or Elevon. <laughs> Elevon. Elevon. Um, Elevon. So this looks like another high mileage shoe. It's not exactly, I'd say, the lightest out there, but it looks to have two layers of cushioning. You have a soft layer underneath your foot and then a firmer level. And one thing I've never seen on a hookah before, it's got gel rubber on on the hot spots. And that gel rubber seems to be pretty, pretty durable stuff uh, from the shoes that we've tested. The shoe looks cool. It's kind of got that Nike kind of heel off in the back, but um, it looks really nice. It's got one of your favorite things. It's got a big one, a yeah. big old full tab. Full tab for days. Um, and uh, I think this is going to be your high mileage training. And again, like I said, in the trends that we're seeing, that I think shoe companies are going for selling you multiple shoes, and that is those high mileage comfort shoes and then your faster, lighter, speedier shoes. So good for the industry. I do have a question. Yeah, what's your question? Is this like an off centered tongue? Are you talking about the tongue on the Elevon too? I'm just curious because I was looking, I was like, wait, why does it? It does, it has a split, but I've seen that, like, if you look at the. Uh, and I'll hate to bring up Nike again on the same conversation about this shoe, but if you look at like the next percent, they split that tongue, it comes over, and where that tendon comes up the front of your foot, mm. it sits right on there nicely without without messing with like that. It's like these companies know what they're doing. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of this one's pretty intense with the lacing. If you see, it's got like it's got double wall lacing, so you have support over the top inside, and then you have lacing again, so it's it's in a looping in between that kind of reminds me of the Saucony uh, ISO fit but not in a bad way um, and then you have the lacing on the top so it's kind of got two ways to hold your foot in a place over the shoe which will probably feel really nice I'm hoping um, yeah what's really cool about this it comes with a little sticker that says for PR samples Hoka 1-1 spring 2020 so this will probably be out what do you think April that's spring that is spring right so we'll get some miles in this. We'll let you know well ahead of time whether or not this is a shoe you should be putting on your list for 2020. This colorway, I love the name of this. What is it? It's Antigua Sand and Caribbean Sea. Hmm. Huh. Which one's which though? I am gonna say the sand is the blue and the, the sea is the darker. What is this one? This one is Dark Shadow and Imperial Blue. Ooh, spooky. Dark Shadow and Imperial Blue. <laughs> That's like a Star Wars color. Like you did. Stormtrooper approved. Yeah. These are pretty sick though. Dude, if if you got these and these are spring, that means that my my speed goat at four has gotta be soon. Yeah. Oof. You're so excited. I'm so that. excited. Yeah. I think everybody's excited for the speed goat. But I, I confirm that Brian Met Metzler Met Meltzer? Metzler? I, I I don't know how to pronounce his last name, but he is already wearing the speed goat and uh, I'm gonna say that just from his nuanced answers that he's enjoying it so hopefully it's the shoe that you guys all hope it is but I know everybody's excited about that so that's that's it for the haul uh, some of the stuff that we also did this week is we put out a couple reviews on uh, clothing so Tracksmith and you Brooks. did the Brooks and we have Saucony yeah Saucony is out the Saucony gear so I was interesting. How do you feel about reversible clothing? Dude, I, I'm fine with it because it is twice as much. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Like, if you, I guess it really helps those people on a budget. Yeah. Like, if you can, like, I don't look like I'm showing up <laughs> every run in the same, same gear. same exact but jacket. It, basically, the Saucony equipment had a bright, like, busy yellow um, or pink for the women. Um, like reversible jacket so you could have just plain black on one side flip it open and then you'd have the you know the bright colors and the reflectivity and the tights did the same thing with it I happen to I just don't love I, I guess it's a a luxury of running in the city that like it, you would think city you need more visibility stuff busy traffic but I think that 
in the city people are looking for pedestrians for one thing and oh, two yeah. a lot of times we're we're running on areas where cars aren't allowed yeah I think that the the leggings being reversible is less of a big like deal for you because obviously you're not going to see the yellow underneath yeah. wearing that but if the jacket like you said if you have it open the jacket if you, if you have it yeah you can, you you can, can see, see it. it so you can't wear it casual I think it would have been a cool jacket for a casual now it's a running jacket like it's I'm yeah. going to use it for specifically for running and, and that's going to be it um, but I, re- I mean other than that it's really well made it's got the nice wind breaking and um, insulated front with the breathable back material so it's pretty cool but I, I have to say, you know, I'm still a big Tracksmith fan. Apparently, we have somewhat of the Swedish version of Tracksmith. Uh, we'll have that soon coming in. And uh, I'm kind of excited about it because it came in really, like, odd colors. Like, I think I'm getting, like, a mustard yellow top and, like, a green pair of, like, and when I say green, like, not Irish green, but, like, darker than Irish green, but, like, or Kelly green, I guess you would call it. Um leggings so I'm gonna look tracksmith out uh, Swedish style Dude, he's just bragging to me <laughs> pretty much making got to them making got a kit too <laughs> so that's cool but yeah so excited to try these you know it's kind of scary because you know I'm going to taper this week we have the wine glass marathon coming up a week from this Sunday so like getting mileage I don't think I need to get tons of mileage on this if it's coming out in spring uh, right away, <laughs> I mean, I, you know, all, all the other reviewers that are getting are going to be like, "We got to get it out fast." But I don't know that we necessarily need to get get this out where people can't purchase it until spring. I definitely want to get my miles in on the ride, uh, and I'm going to try to do that even before we go to Wine Glass and get that review up for you because I know there's a ton of interest, and I think the shoes are already like popping up for sale places and, I, and it retails for 114 bucks which is pretty reasonable these days I think I saw you can pre-order them on Running Warehouse I yeah. think I think they're available they're on bright yellow yeah yellow. yeah that's it which um, is cool yeah and I, I don't mind the bright yellow yeah, no I don't either yeah I think these navy ones you could pull off for like biz cash day yeah but um, yeah I don't mind the um, yellow ones so yeah anything else you want to cover um, question, New Balance Beacon, Fuel Cell Propel, or Hoka Rincon Cliff or Clifton 6 for daily mid-distance runs between 10 to 20 miles? Hmm, I know the Propel was pretty popular with Dave. Yeah. And Dave's, Dave's, Dave, Dave Ames' taste, and if you're not familiar with who Dave Ames is, he's run for it, or aim for it, coaching, and he also is a contributor on our site, Believe in the Run. And his taste and my taste usually line up almost identical uh, for, for shoes. And he loved the New Balance Propel. Um, what were some of the other ones? Well, the Beacon, Beacon is going to be... Rincon, and Clifton 6. I mean, I guess it's a question of if you want the newer mid-solar. Because the Beacon's still using the older, fresh yeah. foam. Uh, so I'm sure that the next one will be a big update. It's do you be. think they're going to do it? you think they'll move it? I mean, it's a pretty popular shoe. I think so. I mean... I don't see. I mean, the propel. I, I would probably, I would probably go propel over the beacon. Yeah. And then yeah, I don't know. Raincon, I don't know anything about. And then like the I haven't run in the Raincon. The Clifton, I love. That that just can work. Like Megan loves the Clifton Six. I thought you ran in the Raincon. Huh? You did. Oh, run. I did run in the Raincon. <laughs> it's I'm having trouble remembering, so definitely go with the propel. <laughs> Well. Oh, wait, no, the ring kind yeah. Jeez, what am I thinking? Oh, yeah, my God. sorry, I'm having a senior moment. <laughs> <laughs> ring I love you. You're a great shoe. But, uh, yeah, it's a little softer than the other ones. Um, I love the ring con, but I would probably go Clifton 6 over the ring con. And uh, I can't Pardon? believe I just totally out on the ring con. I feel bad now. I feel like uh, I know the ring con doesn't have feelings, but I feel like if it did... I just hurt them, and I'm sorry. I You're going to get a thumbs down from them on the video. Yeah. Oh. So, Cody has a question about the um, Tracksmith Sessions jacket, mm-hmm. but before I ask it, he answered that he hasn't had a chance to use the chili pad yet because his wife is prego, and they have to get the thumbs up from the doctor. Thumbs up? It's a cooling bed. It's 
<laughs> they won't do anything to the cake, Cody. Come on. Just be careful. Yeah. You might. So you might want to ask the doctor if you can have above room temperature water as well. Can you? <laughs> I don't know what it's like to wake up <laughs> shivering. That's yeah. what happens to me. Do you like it? <laughs> yeah. So anyway, that's not Cody. a nice answer, but. If she has to sleep in a different room, make her sleep in a different room. What well, she doesn't really know won't hurt her. And if you don't know, Cody was the winner of our chili pad giveaway. Um, Jared was sort of a winner because when they sent us the new one, he got the old one. And uh, I don't know, I, at this point I can't sleep without a chili pad. Yeah. Or without an ooler. So would you wear the Sessions jacket for a long run? Absolutely. It's, it's nice. It's almost like having... A little thicker than a long sleeve shirt that then you can adjust you know how hot you want to be by zipping it you don't have to pull it over your head if it gets too hot you can just take it off and hold it in your hand it's lightweight um, it's great Megan you have it too what do you think of it I don't have the new one but I yeah. like the old one yeah I mean I'd yeah. run it yeah yeah I absolutely I guess a long run yeah yeah she'd run it yeah I'd run it she'd run it I think all the people at Tracksmith would run it Robbie has it. Robbie would run it. You can afford to run but it. Robbie can run, run it. Robbie does the weirdest run. So one day we're going to have to just do a show on Robbie's Strava runs. Like, this man is downwardly mobile in his runs. Like, if there's a crappy part of Baltimore, that guy wants to run through it. If there's a cemetery, he wants to run through it. Like, he does the weirdest Baltimore runs. Like, you'll see the heat map, which he actually wrote a story about, of where people run. And then Robbie's, I guess, trying to make a heat map off of those paths. But, like, if somebody came to town, they're like, where could I run? I would never tell him to look at Robbie's, <laughs> Robbie's, uh, Robbie's runs for ideas. You can ask him if you want to run in really obscure places where you probably don't want to run. Yeah. I saw a broken down clown truck. <laughs> People crawling out. Yeah. Um, Frank O said, do you think we will get a Bondi 7 this year? Jamie answered him saying Bondi is 2020. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they've gone through six. Yeah. Why stop now? Yeah, I, the, the, you know what, the, the setup of the Evalon 2 with the, uh, it's kind of like the rim and core. It almost looks like the cat. Uh, yeah, to be honest with like It's it. that rim and core kind of construction where inside you have one set of cushioning and then they put on the outsole, this white area on top of that. So you have like two layers, but you can kind of still see it through here. There's like little holes and you can still see, see it. So yeah. Uh, my guess is yes, you're, you're going to continue seeing Bondi. It's a popular shoe for them. I, I, I would consider... I think you just asked me who's coming out this year. Oh, Jamie said spring. Yeah, definitely spring. Thanks, Jamison. Yeah. Jamison, uh-huh. would you like to be a guest on the show one day? There's room. Uh-huh. <laughs> Somewhere here. Yeah. You're right here. Beacon 2 Fresh Foam is EVA material. What year. is? They're asking, is Beacon 2 Fresh Foam EVA material? Yeah, I think it is. I think it's just a standard EVA. Oh, yeah. EVA foam. I think it's, is it not the red light? No, I don't think it is. I don't think it is. Mm. I mean, I'd have to do some research to that. I thought it was just, I thought it was red light. I'm not sure. I was told no foam here. It's, it's so just regular like, EVA. Yeah. I drop it from, remember that loud noise? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Dylan said, heard that there was a new balanced fuel cell with carbon fiber plate. This is true. It won't be available to you till April 2020. It's going to be their marathon long distance, like I guess competitor to. Yeah. It should be there for Boston. I think what you're going to see happen is coming out in April. So, what you're going to see is people, their New Balance pros running in it at Boston, which is great marketing if you want to sell a shoe, especially if someone from New Balance wins. But it's great marketing uh, for them because you know how people get all. But how many pictures do you see of people's feet? And they're like, what shoe is this? Yeah. And they're running Boston. I think that that's, that's where we're going to see the debut. You're going to see it at the um, expo. You're going to yeah. see it on some of the uh, racers. It's going to be it's going to be cool. And it, it kind of looked like the, what, the 5280, like outsole mm-hmm. and like the Propel, I guess, all combined into one. So I think they're taking the stuff that they're learning from yeah. all these different shoes and trying to pack it into that and I think there's definitely the gap there for that long distance marathon like fast show yeah what I love about New Balance though and it's what I think was great that Nike did um, so Boost was killing it and instead of Nike trying to do a Boost like material like everybody else did I felt like Sogni had the Ever Run uh, Brooks did the um, what was the Levitate material I forget what that was but they all tried to just mimic the Boost and instead of mimicking the boots and just putting out another shoe that was like the others, 
you know, Nike went and they developed the React phones and the uh, Zoom X and came out with something that was original and new and, and better. And I think that the same thing is happening with New Balance where they're not just trying to put out a um, shoe similar to the Next Percent. They're trying to take the feedback from their athletes and their, their development program and come up with something unique that can be competitive in the space. And, and I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, I definitely, I've been contemplating buying the Propel just because it seems like a great, I kind of like, you know, longer... I guess. Well, you love, yeah, you love the Rebel, so. Yeah. Didn't um, Allie try it? Allie is his wife, or fiance. Future. I'm, I'm pushing the future. Pushing the future. Uh, no, she didn't. She got the beacon. I thought she tried it and then sent it back. Uh, that was that was the Pegasus. I don't think she uh, ever ended up trying. Um, but we do have credit to Running Warehouse because she returned the Pegasus. So maybe uh, I'll steal that and get the propel. buy the propel. Yeah, if you don't know, Jared's a huge. I guess when you're reviewing shoes, I shouldn't tell anybody your bias, but you're you're a pretty big New Balance fan. I well, I mean, they have a lot. They actually have a lot of options in wide. Uh, some of them don't work, and I think I some of the reviews like I didn't like the. Um, was it the? Oh crap! What did I just try? That is was it the Rincon that you can't remember? Not the <laughs> Um, one of them you can look on Believe in the Run uh, I didn't like it I liked the previous version a lot more um, but if I liked the shoe like was the, it a 1080? no uh, 870? 890? it wasn't a numbered one alright are you looking it up? I need you I need you oh what do you want me to look up? I was looking up something else the the New Balance shoe that I reviewed that's black that I didn't like uh I think Aaron. Anyway, also. yeah. yeah. What? I'm, I'm willing to be honest. And is know, there any more questions, Meg? Why are you looking that up? Yeah, I, that's what I was looking up because someone asked about the shoe and I thought it was a joke, but it's actually called this. Have you ever tried the A6 Sortie Magic RP4 Tenka? No, no. I can't repeat what you just said. It's RP4 a real shoe. I googled it. A6 Tenka. Sortie Magic RP4 Sortie Tenka. Magic. The the. Yes. And that's my phone I'm trying to look it up. The um, last A6 that I tried that I really, really liked. Sorry, I missed that. What did you say again? Do you know what? God, Sarah, I never talked to you. I never talked to you. And she's always Stop bugging it. me. It's like an ex girlfriend. She just keeps popping up. <laughs> will so, Adidas release new material? Yeah. That's a question. I will, yes. I think they have to, to be competitive. They're going to have to uh, look, at, look at it. I mean, here's the thing about midsole technology. It seems to get floated around. These companies go out there and they visit the running shoe companies and they're like, hey, check this out. You interested? And whether it comes down to financial, like, it, you know, abilities to be able to say, yeah, we want this and it's exclusive to us, which basically was what happened with the Boost material with Adidas. Uh, I think in actuality, Nike probably passed on the Boost material at first. Um, and then Adidas picked it up and then they get a license and they say okay nobody else can have this exact formulation of this material and so I think I think that a lot of the shoe companies they see the materials coming they either pass on it they can't afford it or something and you know one of them ends up with it so probably right now Adidas has got the word out there that they're probably shopping for something and they just have to see if it's going to work for them Vongo for it the Vongo yeah, didn't like the new one. See? Oh, yeah. Um, um, I'm excited to see all of the midsoles at Trey. Yes. Thoughts on the Adios 5? I love the Adios 5. Is the Vomero 15 coming out this December? Um, you know, I haven't heard anything about the Vomero. Uh, I haven't seen any pre-pictures, which usually we would get stuff leaked out by now. If it's happening, I'm not sure... I wonder what the what the status with Vomero is in actuality. Uh, Chris wants to know what is the best road racing shoe of 2019. Come on, Chris. Do I have to say this on camera? <laughs> it's the next percent. I mean, that's the it's the mamma jamma. It's it's amazing. I I am getting to be an older runner nowadays, and I just PR'd in the half marathon in the next percent. So I'm wearing it for wine glass. And if for some reason it got shredded, 
I would probably just cry and just resign myself to not trying to go after a PR there. I mean, it's just that good. It's light, it's bouncy, it's fast, the car and plate. Like uh, my coach Dave Ames says, when your lace get tired, just lean forward and let the plate do the work. Um, it's just a phenomenal shoe. And I like the, I like the Vapor Weave uh, upper. I think it works. It's not the prettiest thing. It kind of looks like a wrinkled up raisin on your foot, but it's light. It doesn't absorb the moisture. Like, I'm, I'm psyched. When we, at, uh, at Morgantown, the half started like 30 minutes after us. And so, obviously, you know, some of the elites, you know, just zoomed past All green. Actually, so the first person, I think, was wearing, I want to say it was the 4%. And then the second person, this threw me off A6. Yeah. I don't know which A6 they were because he was going too fast. I'll tell you what, man. But if you're fast, it doesn't really matter what And then is. third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh were uh, 4% and next percents. Yeah. And I'm like, that guy should get all the other people's 4% and next percent. Well, it's, that's, that's the thing, you know. It's like car racing. <laughs> at that half I was telling you about, uh, somebody in one of the Popsicle, Brooks Popsicle shoes, uh, I ended up passing at the finish line. But, yeah, I almost got beat by someone. And in, 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 listen, there's dudes out there who are wearing six-year-old, beat to hell things that are, you know, 20 years old, 22 years old, that are flying in in shoes that I would think you wouldn't wear for anything but like fashion and they, they can do it so the shoe doesn't do the work for you you're What's not going to buy it? you're not going to buy a pair of next percent and crush your marathon you're you still got to do the work you still got to do the training what's nice is when you get there you have a light shoe bounce and the plate to spring you forward uh, what we're going to see from uh, Ilya Kipchoge coming up here is a whole new Nike I don't know how it's going to get away without being called a spring but it's basically got a carbon plate an air pocket another carbon plate an air pocket and a smaller carbon plate so basically if you think about that it's a sandwich and it's got a spring so you're going to have the air that pushes the foot this way and the carbon plate that pushes the foot this way so right now you just have a carbon plate that goes and moves you forward this way where now you're going to get the impact bounce up and the spring forward and that's why you're seeing that decoupling between the the shoe is to give it more flexibility in the top carbon plate and then the second one is midway through and then the first the last one is just up in that front toe area so boom spring forward it's there's so many layers too yeah i mean i'm excited i, I really want them to break too uh but at the same time that shoe i you know i'm like is that considered a spring? And if it is considered a spring, is that going to be something that you're going to be able to use in the Olympics? Is it something that you can say the world record is set in, in an actual running shoe? I don't know. I, I mean, a spring, I'm still not breaking. breaking no, down. no, that's the thing. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the whole point. Like, you can give me the fastest shoe on the planet, and I'm not beating, you know, Jeremy. anybody. <laughs> Yeah, Jer Jeremy Arnoy, one of our friends, is quite fast. Uh, he could wear, like, uh, Nike Monarchs and probably beat me in a pair of uh, rollerblades. Yeah. <laughs> what are your expectations for the running shoes in 2020? Top running shoe? No, for... What oh, what's it coming out? Well, I mean, we know we're already starting to see peaks at some of the stuff that's coming out, but I think Trey, and we're going to Trey, which is the running event, in uh, Austin, Texas at the end of the year, which you're pumped about, right? This dude loves food, running shoes, and what else? I guess Alley. But um, Austin, Texas? Austin, Texas. So we're going there. It pretty much is the industry show of the year where you get to see everything that they're trying to sell into shoe stores and sh sell out for this year. You get a sneak peek at where their research and development is going in the future. But for the most part, you're seeing all the shoes that I'll see for the entire yeah. year, you're going to see at Trey. I think so. that's where we'll get excited for next year's shoes because I think companies are kind of holding their cards. Well, they are and they aren't. Like, you know, it's interesting you get the Hoka shoes, they come out now, but like, I didn't know about the Rincon until the Rincon hit. So it'd be nice if we go to Trey and we get to see those kind of shoes that, yeah. are, that are coming out. Uh, it should be a great time. There's going to be a lot of other YouTubers there and re shoe reviewers there and we're going to see um, you know some of our old friends like Jameson 
and, and some other people. And we're going to have our team there. So Jared's going. I'm going. Megan's going. Dave Ames is going. Robbie. Robbie. I, Robbie, I'm sorry. I almost forgot about you there. Like the rain cut. It's because he's um, busy surfing. Yeah. Yeah, Robbie's down in Florida surfing today. Doesn't care about the show at all. He's like, whatever, dudes. Hang 10. <laughs> <laughs> That's Robbie. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Any other questions, Meg? Or are we going to wrap this up? So again, thanks for tuning in. And I hope you enjoyed it. If you didn't catch this live and you're watching the repeat of the show, make sure to tune in on Fridays, 1 p.m. So you can answer or you can ask your questions and have them hopefully answered by us. Also, check us out on Instagram under Believe in the Run. You can go check us out on Facebook, also Believe in the Run. And we have Believe a Facebook it. group, which is fun. It's Believe fun. Believe in the People Run that. group? Yeah. Is that what it's called? Yeah, it's just a Believe yeah. in the Run group. Yeah. Yeah, so check us out, interact, ask us questions, yeah. hang out, tell us stuff. And uh, we'll check in with you soon. So, Megan, go ahead and peace us out. <laughs>